All right, everybody, welcome on back to the road show, week 15, picks and preview. Last week it was a decent week, two and three for both Guy and I. But after an abysmal showing from the Detroit Lions offense, I yet again lost my beat the book. And I'm suspending myself from losing the beat the book for this week. So you better get on it now because it's a guaranteed winner this week. Guy, how was your Sunday? Well, it's also two and three, but I also have a guaranteed winner for the beat the book. Texans absolutely fucked me last week. CJ Stroud forgot how to play football. Mm -hmm. uh, not quite in the graveyard, but can't be losing to the Jets. So let's get to the records to date. Um, a little clerical error. I went back and looked at it. We got house myself. House maintenance here. House maintenance. Mac. Subway Mac. Turn down your radio. My radio's on, bud. Can hear All, right. Day. All right, here we go. Let's uh, catch back up. Records to date. We got Big Brain Benny, myself at 15, 14, and 2, and Guy at 12, 17, and 2. Last week, special guest Mark the Sharp, a.k.a. Marky Stats, as we found out during the show, went 5 and 7, a crazy 12 plays, and an embarrassing 0 and 3 on Beat the Book. Terrible, terrible. And so this is why this week we had to get back to our roots, back to our old school ways. And we went to a guy who just oozes old school and football. This is by far, our guy, our favorite special guest that we've ever had. Welcome to the show, Subway Mac. Boys, it's a pleasure to be here, you know. I mean, I'm glad you had to get some old school flavor in here. And uh, let's get to the picks. Let's get to the games. And as always, the Steelers are back playing on Sunday. Well, Saturday today, we're going to start with the Steelers laying plus one and a half at Jim Irsay's Indianapolis Colts. Over under is 42 and a half. Guys, always kick us off. Well, big brain looks like the roof was definitely closed during that photo of Jim Irsay. <laughs> I think this is a game where both teams coming in seven and six. A lot of questions around the Steelers. A lot of optimism around the Colts. Uh, they've been the NFL's pleasant surprise, if you want to call that, uh, this season. Don't believe in the Colts whatsoever. Give me Mike Tomlin plus one and a half. Mm. Subway Mac, what do you got? You know, I was thinking back um, in the old brain today, and I was thinking about this game and thinking about the Steelers and the Colts recently. Steelers had a lot of success over the Colts at home and away. And I was trying to think, when's the last time they even had trouble or lost on the road at Indianapolis? And I think it's maybe the old Peyton Manning days. So with recent history, um, I think I have to take the Steelers plus one and a half because, you know, Tom's got to get the boys going. A lot of people are really starting to get fired up and get the fire Tomlin things going. Mm. Me, of course, because I am a big Tomlin hater, and he's probably the most overrated coach in the league. But, you know, I think he might get the victory here over Shane Steichen. He is a I, – I can't, I can't even say anything more about freaking <laughs> Mike Tomlin. I just want to go off of Mike Tomlin. But something here is telling me they're going to win today win Saturday, even though they would drop the last two to, to God awful teams. Um, but I have a feeling that the Steelers are going to get the win over the Colts and I'm taking Steelers plus one and a half, even though Mike Tallman sucks. So, you know, so what you said about the Colts and the Steelers history, Jim Ursay tweeted this earlier today, kick off on Saturday, word for word, kick off on Saturdays, 4 30 PM. And let's talk about the elephant in the room. We're going, we are six and 26 all time against these guys going all the way back to nine, 1957, dot, dot, dot. And then it was a, a, a straight face emoji. Such a Jim Irsay tweet. I don't know if the roof is going to be open or not. That's also an important factor to this game. Um, I will be on X monitoring that situation. Oh, I have Jim Irsay tweets on, on, on alert. So. Is that, that, is that their record? Seriously, uh, Steelers are uh, six and twenty-six that. all time against the Steelers. Wow. So yeah. So uh, so that good stats are leading to the Steelers, but I look at this game and last week I said the Colts over unders are eight and four now nine and four on the season. I look at this game and it goes one of two ways. It goes it goes two ways. That's it. Steelers are going to win ugly, seventeen to 13, 17 to sixteen, or the Colts are going to win thirty to ten. 
this total Steelers with an, a total over 40 should not exist in the league. I, I don't care who they're playing. Give me this uh -huh. under 42 and a half. I love the Steelers as well, but I'm staying away from them because of the last two weeks. Give me the uh -huh. under 42 and a half and I'm praying for a Steelers ugly win. All right, let's get into the next game. The last Saturday game we're going to discuss, and it's the nightcap, and it's a good one. We have the surging red hot Denver Broncos plus four and a half at the falling Detroit Lions. Over under is 48. Subway Mac, let's have you kick us off here. I'm going to take Denver plus four and a half here. Um, mm -hmm. Who would have thought after they got the uh, dicks kicked in against the Dolphins earlier in the year, they would be back seven and six? And now, uh, well, I think they're uh, one game behind the Chiefs for first place in the AFC West. Who would have thunk that with uh, Russell Wilson, his terrible year last year, and uh, everybody wanted uh, them, them to trade them. Who They wanted to trade Russell Wilson. They got rid of a couple guys on defense, I believe, this year. Um, but they're really playing well, and they're like a sneaky good team here. And uh, Detroit's been struggling on defense a little bit. I'm not going to pick the Denver to win, but I feel like they're going to cover here. I could see this being easily a field goal game here. So Denver plus four and a half. Um, this is going to be – this is actually going to be a very good game. Two, uh, two teams that need to win badly, and then uh, I think uh, Denver's going to cover here. I like your thinking. You know, Detroit couldn't have looked worse last week at Chicago. Um, but Detroit and Jared Goff is a different beast in a dome and in warm weather. And I'm pretty sure the weather is going to be good inside the dome in Detroit. I think Detroit, they get back on track today. I think Denver, their ride kind of slows down a little bit. And I think Detroit starts to pick back up. They're looking at the Vikings, who the Vikings, who knows who their quarterback situation is, but they're coming right behind them. And with losses by the Eagles, they can look at the two seed, maybe the one seed in the NFC still. So they need to get back on track. I think Detroit does it here against a good Denver team and they get their season back on track. Give me Detroit minus four and a half. Great pick, Big Ring. Great pick. Love Detroit minus four and a half in the spot. I don't think Denver's bad. I don't think Detroit is extremely good. I look Detroit – in Chicago, they lose to the Bears. They lose to the Packers. Divisional game, that's typical Detroit nonsense. Mm -hmm. I think Detroit's the real deal this year. Uh, I don't I don't think that they have a shot at going super far in the playoffs. I can see them winning a playoff game, uh, getting things a little bit interesting. I think Denver just was such an abysmal start. I've seen this out of the Steelers years and years and years where they go down early. And they got to dig themselves out. Everybody's looking at Denver here. Oh, Denver could get right back on track with a win here at Detroit. Not going to happen. Give me Detroit <laughs> minus four and a half. Don't think they cover the spread, Mac, whatsoever, buddy. I think Detroit absolutely lays it on Russell. Wow. Wow. That's surprising there. I mean, I don't know. I just can't see Detroit. They've been really struggling in the past few weeks. And, you know, you just let Denver hang around. You know, I mean, what's uh, Detroit's record right now? I think they're nine and four. They're nine and four. So they really need they really need to lock in that third seed there because they don't want to lock into the fourth seed because that match is probably going to look at a matchup against the Eagles or Cowboys. So they really need to take this victory because I don't think they're going to get ahead of the Niners or Eagles or Cowboys, whoever's wanted to. I think they need to get this victory, stay in the third seed. But I still feel like Denver's going to cover this game. I could see Detroit winning easily, but I I don't think they're going to cover four and a half. You know, if this game is uh, a touchdown game in the fourth quarter, I'm going to be very nervous. But I'm with Guy here. I think Jared Goff gets back on track like he was at the beginning of the year. I think it's a Detroit route. All right, let's move on to Sunday. I'll kick us off on our Sunday slate, our America's Game of the Week. We kick it off with the America's Game of the Week because, let's be real, the Sunday slate sucks this week. The 1 p.m. games are awful. So, but it, it revs back up for the end of the uh, for the end of the day, and we have the Dallas Cowboys, the red hot first place NFC East Dallas Cowboys plus two at the red hot Buffalo Bills with hopes still alive for not only the playoffs but the AFC East. The over under is fifty and a half, and I was wrong about the Bills last week. You know, I said they need that game. They did, and they got it. Um, Patrick Mahomes, I don't know what the hell he was bitching at. K Cardarius Tony couldn't have been more offsides. 
So you got as a ref, you got to call that. He was that offsides. You got to call that. Dallas plus two. This game's tricky. Dallas's defense is good. I don't know what the weather's going to be in Buffalo. I'm not going to check it on a Thursday when we're recording this because it could change. <sighs> Give me the under 50 and a half in this game. I don't what love... I tell you, Mac. What I tell you. You know what? Fuck you. Give me the over. Flipping. Flipping on myself. Oh. Over 50 and a half. I think these two teams put on a show for America's Game of the Week. 425 at Buffalo. Buffalo needs it. Dallas's offense is on it. Buffalo is going to need to stay in the game. Give me the over 50 and a half. I, I, uh, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit surprised you went over there just because of your track record. But let me, let me just reassure you something here, big brain. You mentioned two words in your opening monologue when it came to this game. And those are the two words that I was thinking when it comes to the Bills and the Cowboys. Red hot. Mm -hmm. Most of these teams, red hot. I love the over in this game, 50 and a half. Uh, I think the Bills' offense is very good. Dallas is obviously very good. I mean, they made the Eagles look like a peewee team. Peewee. Uh, it's always great to see my Dallas Cowboys uh, play in these spots because they are just, you know, small-town franchise like Dallas, getting some recognition here. Uh, <laughs> this game really doesn't mean much to Dallas. It means a lot to the Bills. Um, if I had to go with the side here, I'd go Buffalo minus two, but I just like a lot of points in this game. So give me the over 50 and a half. Mac, what do you got? It's tough to say here. Are the Cowboys for real? Are they for real? You know, they got a victory last week over divisional opponent the Eagles. Big victory. I think the score was uh, 33 to 13, I believe. Are they for real, though? This is a big proving ground game because, you know, they won last week. It's a divisional opponent, common opponent. It was at home in the Dome in Jerry World. Are they for real? Now we got Buffalo who's been struggling this year. Got a big victory against the Chiefs last week after crying Mahomes. Uh, fucked that whole game up and Kadarius Tony. But are the Cowboys for real? Is Dak Prescott an actual MVP candidate? I think he is. I think the Cowboys are for real this year. And I'm taking Dallas plus two here. Mm. Big statement game four. I think this means a lot to Dallas. This shows the whole NFL world that the Dallas Cowboys are for real if they go walk into Buffalo and take care of the Buffalo Bills. So I'm taking Dallas plus two. Dak is still my leading candidate for MVP, and I think he's going to show that. And him and C.D. Lamb are going to light it up in Buffalo. I do like the over two. So give me mm. Dallas plus two and the over 50 and a half. Ooh, oh, and for the record, I just want this on the record, folks. I did say that if I had to pick a side here, I'd lean Buffalo minus two. If I had to pick a side, give me Dallas plus two, Mac. That was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. we got a double. The play. boys, we got a the boys are for real the here. Open. Mike McCarthy is proven that he's a better coach than Mike Tomlin. You know what? It's, they just really needed this year. There's a lot of pressure on them, and they got a big victory last week. They really showed me something last week, just taking care of the Eagles and the Philly scumbags. I can't stand them. Mm. And I feel like this is a big, big game for them. They go in here. They are bona fide Super Bowl contenders already. Many people believe that. They win this game in Buffalo. Who cares about the weather? I feel like there should be a bunch of points. So give me definitely give me Dallas here. I am confident in that pick. Well, the boys are riding the over. Uh, Subway Mac and Guy are riding Dallas plus two. It's going to be an electric one, just like this game. Sunday Night Football. Guy, you can kick us off here. We have the Baltimore Ravens, maybe the number one team in the NFL, going to a falling Jacksonville Jaguars who just dropped a game against the Browns, and they look terrible. Jacksonville's plus two. The over-under is 42 and a half. Uh, remind me. Big brain, I uh, you might have just cut out there a little bit, or I just couldn't really couldn't really hear. Did you say electric? See, both these teams are electric. I I, I did. I believe you did as well. Uh, but I'm gonna go system play here. Big brain system play. Give me the under 42 and a half. I don't think Jacksonville is going to score many points in this game. With that being said, I think Baltimore is gonna put up at least 21. I could see this game 21-10 Baltimore. 
But it's 21 to 3 for a while. And Jacksonville gets a, a touchdown at the end. I don't think this under is ever going to be in doubt. Uh, I think Jacksonville, I mean, I, I don't know what's going on with them. It's a good team. Some weeks they show up and they look good. I've watched the NFL long enough to realize that that formula does not work. You got to be consistent. Baltimore has been very consistent all year. Baltimore is clearly the best team in the AFC. Um, what's going to be interesting to watch here is this: is this the game where Lamar Jackson decides to take the rest of the year off? Always a good question. A couple weeks left in the year could be Tyler Huntley time. Give me the under. <laughs> Mac, what do you got for this? Sunday is about time for Lamar to get hurt and miss the last five <laughs> games of the year and not exactly. uh, play in the playoff game. I, you know, Baltimore's really shocked me this year. I picked them to finish last in the AFC North. I had no faith in them. And now they turned around and they're leading the uh, AFC as the number one seed right now. Uh, are they the best team? Yeah, I guess by record. I don't think they're that great. I think they're kind of mediocre. I think Lamar is, I don't know what people see in him. He's a great athlete, phenomenal athlete. Is he going to get it done when it really matters? Is he going to stand in the pocket and deliver some balls downfield and pick apart defense? No, he's not. You can't run around in the playoffs in the NFL. This is the man's league. This ain't college football. That being said, Jacksville, their past two games they lost, and they both lost, and they're both their losses are two A two AFC North teams in the Bengals and the Browns. Are they going to drop three in a row to the AFC North? They already beat the Steelers, but are they going to go one and three against the division? This is a big game for them because they need to really get back on the winning streak, even though Trevor Lawrence is a little banged up right now with the ankle. Um, obviously, I think Christian Kirk's out. They got Calvin Ridley. He's going to be kind of, a, kind of a bust this year. I mean, he hasn't been bad, but he hasn't been definitely great. Um, it's at Jacksonville. I think Jacksonville is more hunger right here. They need a big win. They can't drop three AFC games in a row. I'm going to take Jacksonville plus three and a half here, and I think they're going to win outright. Uh, I just don't think Baltimore is that great. They're a good team. Yeah, they're number one in a mediocre AFC. That doesn't really prove anything to me. I am not a believer in Lamar. I think he's extremely overrated. No one lives off more things that, uh, than Lamar Jackson. He really lives off that 2019 MVP. Um, I mean, he's having a good year, but I think Jacksonville is going to take care of business this week. They need this victory. Yep, my apologies. Jacksonville is plus three and a half, and I like what you said. You know, guys riding the system, but, you know, Monday Night Football, the doubleheader, it was a double over in that. I think this is the turn of the year. No, the prime time games start to get electric, and by electric, I mean points, and I think I foresee points in this game. I think Jacksonville's offense gets back on track, and I think Baltimore is going to control the game on the ground. They're going to run. They're going to score. This over, 42 and a half, I think it's going to be close, but I like this over. I think this is where primetime overs start to come back on the year. It's been too much on the unders. Give me this over with two electric teams, LaMarvelous Jackson, Trevor Lawrence, over 42 and a half. Marvelous Jackson. I can't stand that. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, I'll right. take Trevor Lawrence any day of the week over Lamar Jackson. I don't care if he's one of the MVP. I'll take Trevor Lawrence. Let's get to what we've all been waiting for, the beat the book play of the day. Two guarantees, guaranteed winners from Guy and I. But as always, our special guest will start us off. Subway Mac, let's beat the book. Beat the book. We only got one here prepared for you. I absolutely love the under in the Steelers versus Colts game. I know we already went through it. I didn't say anything about it. I think that's the best play right here. Um, I like Colts, are missing John Colts are missing Jonathan Taylor. If uh, Jonathan Taylor's in there, I would love the Colts in this game just because the Steelers are really thin at inside linebacker. They had to get two guys out of retirement. And uh, Landon Roberts is really playing above his head right now, but uh, – um, he's a little banged up right now. So if Jonathan Taylor was healthy, I might say the over and the Colts, but he's not. Um, so I don't think they're going to score many points. Gardner Minshew, he's a serviceable uh, player. Um, I think the best thing to happen to the Colts this year was AR5 to get hurt because uh, I don't think they would be in any position, this position they'd be in right now. Um, I think the best play here is the under because we all know the Steelers' offense is garbage. I don't see them scoring more than 20 points, and I definitely don't see the Colts scoring more than 20 points. So that's the best play of the week for me. Play of the day, Steelers, 
Colts under 42 and a half. Mm. So I'll go next. So I, I, I looked at the slate and I saw this game and I'm wondering why the spread is as low as it is. Give me the LA Rams minus six and a half. The LA Rams looked phenomenal in Baltimore. They, you know, it came down to a punt return for the win. The Rams are hungry for the playoffs. They're healthy. They're getting back on track. There's no reason why they should be. They should be more than six and a half point favorites against the Washington Commanders. Give me the LA Rams all day minus six and a half. They're gonna they're gonna win by more than a touchdown easily. Both good beat the book plays out of you guys. Really enjoyed that. Subway Mac, great active when it comes to uh, Gardner Minshew with serviceable, most serviceable player the league's seen the last probably two, three years. Uh, this really pains me to do this. Mm. This really pains me to do this. I, I want to get out in front of this. this. This pick pains me to do it. But I have to win the beat the book play of the day. It's the most important thing we do on this show. And in a minute, you guys are going to realize why this pains me to do it. Uh, our good friend, good friend of the program, Brady Moore. Pain, painful guy when it comes to the Cincinnati Bengals. Mm -hmm. Painful guy. But, Brady, if you're watching this, I want you to see. I'm looking in the camera right now, Brady. Uh, Cincinnati minus three against the Vikings is my beat the book play of the day. Guy, Bro, real quick. Real quick, Bengals are minus three and a half on DraftKings right now. Don't care what the Bengals are. Bengals could be minus 14 and a half. Give me the Bengals minus three and a half. It's free money, folks. Jake Browning might be better than Joe Burrow. He might be better than Joe Burrow. Mm. The free. I know he's better people than Kenny are asking. Oh, uh, hey, 100% uh, he's better than Kenny Pickett. But uh, Minnesota, Minnesota's done. They're done. I, I, Josh Dobbs, magic lost. I think Nick Mullins is starting for the Vikings this week. He is. That'd be correct. It's it, This game, I believe, is in Cincinnati. It is. It is in Cincinnati. Zach Taylor's comments this past week has me fired up for this ball game. Like I said, this slate stinks on Sunday. I'm going to be watching this one because it's my beat the book. I think the Bengals here have a legit chance with Jake Browning. As bad as that pains me to say, Jake Browning's playing some good football. They've put up points past two weeks. Yeah, he started against the Steelers, and, and it was sad. But you know what? He's really turned it on. I think the the troops are rallying around Jake Browning. They know it's Joe Burrow's team, but they're rallying around him. He's he's a very good backup, as he showed. He just bought himself a long career as a backup in this league. Give me Cincinnati, minus three and a half. Beat the book play of the day. Big brain. Can I get can I get one more? Can I get a uh, look at the book for? Uh, can I get a look at the San Francisco versus Arizona game? What is the spread on that game? San Francisco is minus twelve. Minus twelve. Give me that as another beat the book play. <laughs> and add give me beat the, the book. Niners, minus twelve and a half. I am confident. I don't give a shit how big the spread is. The Niners are rolling this year. The white man is running the football hard. Purdy is being consistent. He might be in the uh, MVP candidate race, too. So I love the Niners. I love CMC. I love Debo. Trent Williams is a dog on the line. Give me the Niners here, minus 12. They're going to run over Arizona. So, you know, I almost picked the Niners as my beat the book, but then I saw the Rams as only a touchdown favorite against the Commanders, and I had to ride the Rams. So if you ride this uh, beat the book parlay, we got the Steelers Colts under. We have the Bengals minus three and a half. We have the LA Rams minus six and a half and the Niners minus 12. If you put 20 bucks on it, you win 270. Now, a reminder, two of these games are on Saturday where we have the Steelers game and the Bengals game. So get this in when this comes out. It's going to come out on Friday. Um, let's win some money. Five and oh, five and oh, five and oh. Big thanks to our special guest, Subway Mac, for coming on. We appreciate it. Live from the Accord. Sorry, going to be alive from the subway parking lot, you know. Another day, another day. And I know you're heading there soon, Mac. I appreciate you I might have here. Soon. Five dollar foot long is calling my name right now. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for thanks for coming on, Subway Mac. I mean, the special guests have been absolutely atrocious. They've been terrible. You can take the reins right here with a big week, and I think you're going to have a big week and accept against the picks that you picked against me, which the Broncos are going to get their ass beat. 
other than that, you're going to have a big week, going to have a great day, going to have a great Sunday. Let's win some cash. As always, take it easy. Stay daggish, and let's have a good one. Thanks, everybody.